simu hapa ikiwa ni yako unaweza kujia it has been found where the children were putting on just at the main door so if it is your phone you come for it
Okay, at this juncture, we welcome the parish priest to welcome us here officially. God is good and all the time today is a solemnity the solemnity of all saints and on this solemnity we have this special celebration of the first profession of our five novices novice Mary Sarah Archola from the Archdiocese of Kisumu St. Pantaleon Parish. What of Pantaleon, Mefika? Pantaleon, where are you? Pantaleon, where are you? To a big year, my coffee. Then we have novice Mary Christine Macau from the Diocese of Water, St. Boniface, Wautu Parish. What of Water, Mefika? Mr. Leo, when did you come from here? Well, big year, my coffee. And I will share a job career in the Diocese of Eldoret, St. Abraham's End of Parish. Wow, well, big year, my coffee. And I will assume to Isabel Maloba, Diocese of Kakamega. St. Peter's Parish, Mumias. Ah. I salute what became a coffee. Now it's conceived here, a winner, a winner, a winner, a winner. At Dice of Kisumu, St. Boniface, Alwar Parish. Now it became a coffee. can see you now we have professional mourners in Kisumu. <laughs> I can also see we have professional other people who have been hired by the novices <laughs> to celebrate on their behalf. We thank God for the gift of these five novices. We pray God that one day they join the company of those whom we celebrate today, All Saints Day, from the Archdiocese of Kisumu, the Diocese of Wote, the Diocese of Eldoret, and the Diocese of Kakamega. Quite a mix showing 
how our institute continues to extend its wings wider and wider as a witness to the love of God among the various communities. Mr. Beninia and all the sisters of the Franciscan Sisters of St. Anna congratulate you today and we pray for this institute. That through these celebrations, many more girls, young ladies, may offer to serve God as Franciscan Sisters of St. Anna including this one, who are here today. You never know. One day they'll come back here as novices to celebrate this. We pray for them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have already sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my, my most grievous fault. Therefore, ask blessed Mary of our body, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
ever living God. I was gift to venerating on celebration, the merits of all the saints. Bestow on us, we pray, and on this your servants, of his merry sorrow, now is Mary Christine, now is Sheila Jekori, now is Asumta Isabel, now is Consentia Awino, with the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you, for which we honestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever.
A reading from the book of Revelation.
Somo katika barua ya kwanza ya mtakatifu Yohani. Wapendwa, tazameni jinsi mapendo aliyotujalia Mungu Baba yalivyo makubwa. Tunaitwa watoto wa Mungu na ndivyo tulivyo. Kwa sababu hii ulimwengu haututambui kwa kuwa haukumtambua yeye. Wapendwa, sasa tu watoto wa Mungu. Lakini hali yetu ya baadaye haijajulikana bado. Ila itakapojulikana tunajua kwamba tutakuwa hali moja na Yesu. Kwa maana tutamuona kama alivyo. Kila aliye na matumaini katika yeye anajitakasa awe mtakatifu kama yeye alivyo mtakatifu neno la bwana kwangu ninyi nyote msumbukao na kulemewa na mizigo nami na nitawapumzisha asema bwana From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. 
At that time, seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. God is good and all the time. Today on this solemnity of all saints, among other things, we celebrate the universality of the church, the Catholicity of the church. And that is why when, for example, I asked for people from Ogunja when they have arrived, people I know are from as far as Tanzania, who are standing up and urinating. They are from Ogunja. <laughs> then when I asked for those from Alwar, people I know are from as far as Nigeria, <laughs> who identify themselves as people from Alwar. We celebrate the universality of the church and the Catholicity of the church in this celebration. Because the numbers being mentioned, the 144,000 from the tribes of Israel and the uncountable number of people from all nations are constituted by the people of God without minding race or tongue or nation. They are universal. Novice mistresses are um, some of the very few and rare mothers who give birth when they are at the same time pregnant again. Mm -hmm. 
the two actions happen together. So a novice mistress is always pregnant. <laughs> As she gives birth, she is still pregnant. She's giving birth to five today. Ten have entered the stomach. <laughs> and the story continues. I wish all mothers were like novice mistresses. <laughs> Continue the generation of the children of God as we congratulate these five from Kisumu, from Wote, from Eldoret, from Kakamega. I think those are the ones. <laughs> Okay, and from Alwar. <laughs> <laughs> and we have uh, been joined by priests more than from, the, from uh, Kisumu. Those priests who are not from Kisumu, just stand up. I know from Eldoret, from Nakuru, <laughs> from Wote, <laughs> from Eldoret, from Eldoret, from Kericho, from Eldoret, and from, and from Eldoret. That is my classmate. Thank you very much. Toshiba, wow. We want to thank these priests who have joined us from the other diocese, together with the sons of the soil, who are always with us when you have this kind of uh, celebrations. And what a day, what a celebration. The solemnity of all saints. And listen to the question of the elder. Who are these dressed in white? And where do they come from? Who are these dressed in white? And where do they come from? I'd like us to go back a little bit to the psalm, Psalm 24, which was sung very well today, and reflect a little bit on it. No, I'm serious. Those of you, <laughs> those of you who are laughing, if we call you here to sing, you will not even open your mouth. Psalm 24 is a very unique psalm. And it celebrates the entrance of humanity or the human person into the space of God. And the reverse. It celebrates the entrance of God into human space. So there are two processions going on. The human procession moving towards the space of God and there is the divine procession moving towards the space of the human person. But this psalm begins by making a declaration which is very critical and which is very important for our understanding of the solemnity of today and the celebration of profession today. It begins by saying this. To Yahweh belong the earth and all it contains, the world and all who live in it, it is he who laid it on the foundations of the seas, on the flowing waters, he fixed it. To Yahweh belongs the earth and all its fullness. It is he who has laid it on the foundations of the seas, on the flowing waters, he fixed it. This is the point of departure. 
He declares God as creator, the in charge, the one in control. So even as the procession begins, we have this at the back of our mind. Yahweh is creator. So when he begins his procession coming into human space, even that human space belongs already to him. Lest we forget this psalm of the procession of the human into the divine space is a psalm that perhaps many say was celebrating. It was sung to celebrate the coming of the Ark of the Covenant into the Temple of Jerusalem. Either its very first installation or after its, it had been recaptured in a war, so the Ark of the Covenant is being brought back to be installed in the Temple of God. And this is the background of this Psalm, Psalm 24. That is why it was sung. And it begins with this declaration. After the declaration, it asks a question that is significant for all of us. Who shall go up to the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? Who shall make part of the procession the holy of holies? Who shall stand in the presence of the Lord? And the next verse gives the answer. The clean of hands and the pure of heart. Whose heart is not set on vanities. Who does not swear an oath in order to deceive. These are the ones who qualify to climb the mountain of the Lord and to stand in his holy place. These are those who can make part of the procession to enter the space of God. But the procession towards entering the space of, of God has deep inside us the consciousness that we are entering the space of one who is in control of everything, who is responsible even of the space we want to enter. Therefore, our procession has to be conscious of that. By the way, that is what happens at the beginning of Mass. The procession at the beginning of Mass is the procession by humanity into the space of God to encounter the space of God. And it is hoped that before the end of the liturgy, God's procession to encounter us will have been fulfilled. So during the procession into mass, to go and enter into the space of God, we must remain conscious of this in everything we do and in everything we say and throughout the liturgy. And it is at this point that sometimes I am misinterpreted. When I say, when I talk about liturgical dance, and some people have mistakenly said the Archbishop of Kisumu has prohibited liturgical dance. It's not true. It is not true. That is very far from the truth. What I said is this, and I repeat, perhaps with the help of the psalm of today. At the beginning of Mass, we are processing to enter into the space of God. How do people who want to go and enter the space of God behave? How do, how do they move? What gestures do they have? What songs do they sing? 
that is the key question. And throughout the entire celebration, people who are conscious of entering the space of God, as this will be entering today, the five of them, people are conscious of entering the space of God, the liturgical space, how do they respond conscious of this? What kind of movement accompanies them? What kind of words? What kind of gestures? Does it help the procession towards the space of God? Or does it spoil the procession towards the space of God? So that God now may make his procession towards us, to encounter us. Will that encounter be interrupted? Or is it going to be promoted? Because the procession into mass is more than just movement. Comes something very close what the psalmist is telling us in Psalm 24. Man is moving into God's space and God is moving into man's space which is actually his space. He created it. That is the parameter. It is not prohibition. It is consciousness. And when it comes to this, it does not matter whether you are as thin as a needle or you are opposite. In fact, <laughs> in fact, some people who are as thin as needles are a distraction because they are very vigorous. <laughs> and what they begin with as a liturgical dance ends up being entertainment in the liturgy. The liturgy should not have entertainment. In fact, at one point, <coughs> you find the congregation clapping. And it means we have missed the point. <coughs> so when I gave the example of the postulants, which I still give today, It was just a vehicle to explain the point. We are processing in the space of God and you must continually remain conscious of that. And throughout the liturgy, at no point should our liturgy turn into an entertainment. It does not matter your size. Just in case some people took offense by what I said some months ago. In fact, some of those who are not like needles are better people in liturgical dance. Okay? <laughs> because then they are not capable of being vigorous. Okay? They are <laughs> modest, slowly, prayerful in contemplation of God. That is what I said. That is what I still do now. Look at those little children, how angelic they were when they were in front here, promoting prayer. We shall climb the mountain of the Lord who shall stand in his holy place. Everything we do in the liturgy must help us to climb the mountain of the Lord and to stand in his holy place. These are our five sisters. Today we can refer to them as these who are climbing the mountain of the Lord. They want to stand in his holy place for the rest of their life. They desire to be clean of hands and pure of heart. And they want their heart not to be set on vanities, 
and they don't want to swear an oath in order to deceive. That is going to be all their life. That is their prayer, and that is our prayer for them and for ourselves as they join us. And it is very interesting when the psalmist talks about this procession of the human person towards God, which is what they are doing now. They are making a procession towards God. One, they leave behind something. Secondly, they bring something to the altar of God in the procession. At the beginning of their procession towards God, they leave behind something. They don't want to turn to it again. But at the same time, they carry along with themselves something they want to leave at the altar of God. Then something happens because the procession is not just theirs. The procession is as well God's. When they deposit something at the altar, as they are doing now, this is what happens. Because they are the people who seek the face of God, such is the one who will receive the blessing from Yahweh, saving justice from the God of his salvation, her salvation. As they come in procession towards God, leaving behind quite a number of things and carrying with them something to deposit at the altar, they don't go away empty-handed. They go away with the blessings of the Lord, saving justice of our God. Because this are the people who seek him, who seek the presence or the face of the God of Jacob. In the last few days, three days, we have had a series of celebrations that move in the same line, about four of them, where the renewal of temporary vows, not long ago, in Luak, and in, in Nairobi. And then soon after, that same day, in the evening, we had the admission to candidacy for the priesthood. And then the following day, yesterday, we had ordination of the sacred orders, priesthood. And today, we have first profession. And all these four celebrations are the same movement of the human towards the divine. And this movement of the human towards the divine, having left behind something, does not go to God empty-handed, even if God doesn't need what we carry in our hands, because it's self-sufficient. They are bringing the gift of themselves at the altar. And on leaving the altar, going on mission, they are not going away empty-handed. God has refilled the hands that were emptied at the altar with his blessing. And then the psalmist turns to the other procession the procession of God into the space of the human and begins by saying, O gates, lift high your heads, raise high ancient doors, let him enter the king of glory. Now God has embarked on his procession. We have done ours we have made ours. They have brought themselves, the five of them. We have brought them. We have presented them at the altar. Now the psalmist turns our attention to the other procession going on, which actually was the first that set in motion 
our procession. Lift high, lift high your gates. Raise high ancient doors. Let him enter the king of glory. Who is he, this king of glory? It's Yahweh, the strong, the valiant. Yahweh, the valiant in battle. Gates, lift high your heads. Raise high ancient doors. Let him enter the king of glory. Procession has met procession. And there is an encounter between the divine and the human. The divine is the maker. The human is the creature made by God. My dear sisters, five, the novices, you are part of a movement the movement of the church towards God which you personalize and make it your own. You want to move with the church through history with your own life with your own witness accompanied by those who are like you beginning with those of your own institute to move towards the mountain of Yahweh. Who shall climb the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? From the readings we had yesterday, the celebration of ordination, the answer is none of us is worthy of this. None is worthy of this. It is the other procession coming from the other side other direction that makes it possible to stand on the mountain in the presence of God because the other procession is sanctifying, purifying, cleaning our hands and purifying our hearts. And that is why we shall be counted among the 144,000 and the uncountable number of multitudes from the nations. When the elder asks, who are these? Who are these clothed in white? And where do they come from? John is unable to answer. And the elder answers John and tells him, These are the ones who have come from the tribulation, who have come from the persecution. And they have washed their garments white in the blood of the Lamb. These are the ones, not who have come from, are the ones who are going into persecution. They are going into the tribulation. Because your vocation is part and parcel of the cross of Christ. And you cannot separate it from it. When the elder says, who are these? From the response he has given John, we can also respond confidently and say, you are the ones whom the Lord has picked out, that you may go through the
the nation of Kakamega, the nation of Eldoret, the nation of Uote, and the nation of Kisumu. A mixture of nations. And the king of glory comes, and there is rejoicing of the nations. As we open the gates, we lift up our voices for the king of glory to come in. Let us join our brothers and our sisters as they recommend. <laughs> Let us join our sisters here and our brothers yesterday as they make this special commitment. We shall climb the mountain of the Lord. Who shall stand in his holy place? Please remember, from our point of view, no one. From God's point of view, all of us have the possibility. Because God's procession into our space is coming to encounter our procession into his space. At this juncture, the candidates will be examined by the Archbishop concerning their readiness to dedicate themselves to God. Novice Mary Sarah Ajola from the Archdiocese of Kisumu, St. Battalion Parish. Novice Mary Christine Macau, Diocese of Wate, St. Boniface Wautu Parish. Novice Sheila Chepkorir, Diocese of Eldoret, St. Abraham's Endo Parish. Novice Asunta Isabel Maloba, Diocese of Kakamega, St. Peter's Mumias Parish. And Novice Consincia Awino Owino, Archdiocese of Kisumu, St. Boniface Anwar Parish.
Dear sisters, are you willing with God's help to follow Christ to the best of your ability and to put your life in the service of God and his people? Yes, I am. I'm going to do it one by one. <laughs> yes, I am. 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 Today. Yes, I am. Today. Today, you are here to take the vow of chastity for the first time. Are you ready to love Christ wholeheartedly? Yes, I am. 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 Religious life is a life of poverty and in the service of others. This demands self-denial. Will you put this into practice? Yes, I will. 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 Are you willing, through your obedience in this religious community, to dedicate yourself to the responsibility which will be given to you? Yes, I am. 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 May God who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment before the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I invite <coughs> Sister Mary Sarah Achola to make your first vows before God, your superior, and all here present. Because the Lord has given me, for the praise of God, the grace to live with firm resolve, the gospel of Jesus Christ more perfectly. I, Sister Mary Sarah Achola, vow in the presence of my fellow sisters, in your hands, Sister Mary Beninia Aoko, to live for one year in obedience, poverty, and chastity, and marry according to the rule of life of brothers and sisters of the Third Order Regular of St. Francis of Assisi and the constitution of our congregation. Therefore, I give myself wholeheartedly to this family, the Franciscan Sisters of St. Anna, in order to fulfill my dedication to the service of, of God and the Church, with the grace of the Holy Spirit, at the intercession of the Holy and Immaculate Virgin Mary of our brother Francis and all the saints and supported my, by my fellow sisters. So help me God and this your holy gospel. If you faithfully keep your vows and follow the gospel precepts, God will give you eternal peace. Amen. 
Now I invite Sister Mary Christine Macau to make your first vows before God, your superiors, and all here present. Because the Lord has given me, for the praise of God, the grace to live with firm resolve, the gospel of Jesus Christ more perfectly. Hi, Sister Mary Christine Macau, vow in the presence of my fellow sisters in your hands. Sister Mary Beninya Aoko, to live for one year in obedience, poverty and chastity and marriage, according to the rule of life of brothers and sisters of the Third Order Regular of St. Francis of Assisi and the constitution of our congregation. Therefore, I give myself wholeheartedly to this family the Franciscan Sisters of St. Anna, in order to fulfill my dedication to the service of God and the Church, with the grace of the Holy Spirit, at the intercession of the Holy and Immaculate Virgin Mary, of our brother Francis, and all the saints, and supported by my fellow sisters. So help me God, and these you are holy gospels. If you faithfully keep your vows and follow the gospel precepts, God will give you eternal peace. Amen. Amen. Now I invite Sister Sheila Jepkorir to make your first vows before God, your superior, and all here present. Because the Lord has given me, for the praise of God, the grace to live with power resolve, the gospel of Jesus Christ, more perfectly. I, Sister Sheila Jeffries, vow in the presence of my fellow sisters in your hands, Sister Mary Beninia Aoko, to live for one year in obedience, poverty, and chastity, and marriage according to the rule of life of brothers and sisters of the Third Order Regular of St. Francis of Assisi and the constitution of our congregation. Therefore, I give myself wholeheartedly to this family, the Franciscan Sisters of St. Anna, in order to fulfill my dedication to service of God and the Church with the grace of the Holy Spirit at the intercession of the Holy and Immaculate Virgin Mary of our brother Francis and all the saints and supported by my fellow sisters. So help me God on these your holy gospels. If you faithfully keep your vows and follow the gospel precepts, God will give you eternal peace. Amen. Now I invite you, Sister Sukta Isabel Maroba, to make your first vows before God, your superiors, and all here present. Because the Lord has given me, for the praise of God, the grace to live with calm resolve, the gospel of Jesus Christ, more perfectly, I, 
Sister Asumta Isabel Maloba, vow in the presence of my fellow sisters, in your hands, Sister Mary Benina Aoko, to live for one year in obedience, poverty and chastity, and marriage according to the rule of life of brothers and sisters of the third regular, third order regular of St. Francis of Assisi and the constitution of our congregation. Therefore, I give my soul wholeheartedly to this family, the Franciscan sisters of St. Anne, in order to fulfill my dedication to the service of God and the church. With the grace of the Holy Spirit, at the intercession of the Holy and Immaculate Virgin Mary, of our brother Francis, and all the saints, supported by my fellow sisters. So help me God, and this your Holy Ghost, if you faithfully keep your vows and follow the gospel precepts, God will give you eternal peace. Amen. And I invite Sister Consincia Wino or Wino to make your first prophetic vows for God, your superiors, and all here present. Because the Lord has given me, for the praise of God, the grace to live with firm resolve, the gospel of Jesus Christ more perfectly, I, Sister Consincia Awino Awino, vow in the presence of my fellow sisters, in your hands, Sister Mary Benigna Aoko, to live for one year in obedience, poverty, and chastity, and marriage, according to the rule of life of brothers and sisters, or the third order regular, or St. Francis of Assisi, and the constitution of our congregation. Therefore, I give myself wholeheartedly to this family the Franciscan Sisters of St. Anna, in order to fulfill my dedication to the service of God and the Church, with the grace of the Holy Spirit, at the intercession of the Holy and Immaculate Virgin Mary, of our brother Francis, and all the saints, and supported my, by my fellow sisters, so help me, God, and this your holy gospel. If you faithfully keep your vows and follow the gospel precepts, God will give you eternal peace. Amen. Now invite the sisters to repeat the vows in silence. Na kwa maombezi ma 
Tati Kukule, Mama Bikira Maria, na Dugu Yesu Francisco, na Watakatifu Wote, na Usaidizi wa Watawa Wetu. Namkiziweka kwa makini na pili hizi. Namkifuata injili takatifu Mungu atawapigalia amani ya milele. Amen. be given to these year brothers. May the use of these articles of faith remind them constantly of your presence in their life and of the journey they have to make towards you constantly, every day, with their focus on you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Almighty God bless them, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
presented with a crucifix. Dear sisters, accept the crucifix of our Lord Jesus Christ. Take it with you, with you wherever you must be sent, to be your strength and protection, your consolation and salvation in life and in death. Accept the directives of your congregation. May they be a help to live your religious life faithfully. Amen. In the religious life, you are bound to say the prayers of the church daily. Let this prayer become very dear to you, knowing that it unites you in prayers with the whole church. sisters, we keep for them their books and Bibles and the cross and are, we invite the Archbishop and the Council to congratulate them. Why I can give us a song as they are being congratulated.
za kupeti tunaendelea na misa takatifu ni wakati wa sadaka
Come on.
sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May these offerings we bring in honor of all your saints be pleasing to your Lord as we present before you this your servants. Sister Mary Sarah, Sister Mary Christine, Sister Sheila Jepkore, Sister Sumta Isabel, and Sister Conscientia are we known. And grant that, just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we and them may experience their concern for our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. It is right and 
just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and saints already gives you eternal praise. Towards us, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith. Rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church, through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with a multitude of saints and angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to God, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who hold him to the truth, and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, remember, Lord, your servants, Sister Mary Sarah Chola, Sister Mary Christine Macau, Sister Sheila Jepkorir, 
Sister Asunta Isabella Maloba, Sister Concilia Awino Owino, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially with the glorious Eva Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, and of these your servants, which we make to you on their profession day. Sanctify this offering in your mercy, so that they who by your gift have today united themselves more closely to your Son may hasten gladly to meet him when he comes in glory at the end of time. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to your God is Almighty Father, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he saved the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy <coughs> victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetual, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into your company, not weighing our merit, but granting, that, granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O oh Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as to wait the blessed hope the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace, I give you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Yeah. 